Suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, this I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember brought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished to borrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my book surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the loss of the door. For that rare and radiant maiden. He was here forevermore. And the silken satin certain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood weeping. Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams the mortal ever dared to dream before. But the stillness was unbroken, and the silence gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into my chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard it talking, something louder than before. No, I said I, that is something on my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. It is the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutters, wind with many a flirt and flutter. In there stepped a stately raven from the saintly days of war. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped, nor stayed he, but with mean, lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling, my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance of war. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and shaven, wandering from the night before. Tell me what thy lord your name is on the night's blue home and shore. Quoth Raven. Much I marvel this ungainly, thou to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevance. For we cannot help but dream that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast above the sculpted bust above his chamber door was such name as nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the pallid bust spoke only with that one word, as if his soul and that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather that he fluttered, tell I scarcely more than muttered. Other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Quoth Raven, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken, by reply so happy spoken. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon its velvet sinking, I betook myself to me. Fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, Bent and croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the foul whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat in my head, my head at ease and time, on the cushion fell the mine, that the lamplight glowed more. But, with velvet fire in with the lamplight glowed more, she shall press. I then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose fainted footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, God hath sent thee. By these angels he hath lent thee respite, respite and nepenthe <coughs> from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind of empty, and forget thy loss, Lenore. Quoth the raven, evermore. Prophet, cried I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent thee, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. 
Prophet, could I, being of evil, prophet still if bird or devil. By the heaven that bends above us, by this god we both adore. We tell this soul, the sorrow laden, if within the distant Aiden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, that the angels may be Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, that the angels may the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked of sergeant. Dead thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken and quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Go the raven, nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chin. And his eyes all the same, of a demon that is deep, and the lamp light o'er the screen throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. No.